Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will show you some calculation on ammonia molecule. And uh, the focus is the calculation of inversion barrier using larger elastic band calculation using quantum espresso. And uh, if you haven't heard about the inversion barrier, uh, you can see this plot. So y axis is the energy. And um, if the nitrogen atom is on the left or the nitrogen atom is on the right, the energy is is the same, is the minimum, is the optimum energy. And then if you want to push the nitrogen atom from the left through the middle to the right, there will be one energy barrier. And this energy barrier is what we want to calculate today. And this kind of inversion is called the umbrella inversion. It is something like if you want to open your umbrella in a very windy day, and then if the wind is strong enough, uh, it can flip the, uh, flip your umbrella. So this is something similar as what happens here. If, if the energy is large enough, it can go through the barrier and, uh, and flip the uh, molecule. And this uh, umbrella inversion has some consequences in the infrared spectrum because in the uh, because infrared spectrum is usually the um, the vibrational mode. So if you imagine that there is one vibrational mode on the left hand side, there is another one vibrational vibrational mode of the same energy on the right hand side because it is symmetric. And then since there is a barrier, but still those two uh, levels can see each other. And uh, according to uh, quantum mechanics, and those uh, two levels will split. And then, uh, of course, uh, not only the first, uh, the first vibrational mode will split, the second will also, the third will also, and that results in the uh, doubling of the vibration peaks uh, in the infrared spectrum due to this uh, umbrella inversion. So today I'm not going to calculate the infrared spectrum, although it can also be done in quantum espresso, <coughs> and um, I will focus on the calculation of, of this barrier. And the first thing to do is to relax the single uh, ammonium molecule. And uh, let's get started. So this is the uh, input file for, for the relaxation. I guess uh, you are more or less familiar with the with the input file for, for this pw.x and uh, the calculation is relax and um, the pseudo potential uh, directory and here we lower the threshold for or, or we say we increase the precision of the relaxation calculation by lower the threshold of um, energy convergence and force convergence and uh, I also increased the precision by increased the kinetic energy cutoff and also lower the threshold of, uh, of el electrons convergence thr threshold. And you see here that we use the simple cubic lattice with a large uh, uh, unicell constant because we want to do a molecule in the box calculation and we don't want the molecule to see outside of the box and to see other molecules in the, in the in other boxes so so there are four molecules in uh, there are four atoms in one molecule and two types of atoms one nitrogen one hydrogen and um and the k points uh, there is only one k point and um, and and this is more or less the same if you uh, if you write here as gamma and uh, and delete this line, but um, but we can but it's completely fine that if if we do it this way. So for the atomic positions, we use angstrom this uh, this time, and um, and now you will see that we have we have another three numbers after the real coordinates. And um, and this means that whether you allow the corresponding co coordinate to relax or fix it, so one means that you allow it to relax, and zero means that you fix that coordinate. So for example, for this uh, hydrogen atom, we keep the first two uh, relaxed, and uh, we keep the th uh, third one fixed. Yeah. So basically, all of the hydrogen um, atoms here. Well, uh, we only allow them to to freely move on the z equals zero plane, and for the nitrogen is the other way around. We um, we only allow it to move on the z axis. So you may ask whether whether this is still general. The answer is yes, because the mo um, because it doesn't really matter uh, where the molecule is in the box, 
or where the or in which orientation the molecule points to in the box. The the, the uh, what we um like the only thing that we are interested in is the shape of the molecule. It's the bond angle, the bond length. So so it's it's totally fine to um, keep all of the hydrogen atoms on the z equals zero plane and and keep uh, nitrogen atom on the on the z axis and uh, we still don't lose any generality about the shape of the molecule. Okay, so so that's all for the input file and for the um, and we just run it. First, uh, remember to you rem remember to source the uh, Intel compiler and uh, let's see mpi run minus mp q and uh, we are the installation of our quantum espresso and thing and pwx yeah and then input file uh, this is an h3.1 the relax and output to g 3 one out so this is a very small molecule, so it will be very fast. Yeah, but still, is a relaxation calculation, and we um, we make um, a lot of conditions to be quite precise. So that's why it still takes some time. And um, and remember that if you want to check the uh, the output file when it is updating, you can open a new terminal and then go to the folder and then use this command tail minus f and the output the name of the output file, yeah. So, so here it is already done, and um, and we want to open the output file to see H three dot one out. Okay. So this is done, and this is the final coordinates of the molecule. And uh, we want to, like, as a as a middle step, we also want to uh, like write down the bond length and angle and compare it with the reference. So we use the x x kristen x kristen x kristen and open pws scf and open output file. And that is here. All coordinates as animation. And we click here so that the molecule is intact. And you see that this is the starting point. And then we can click here. It makes some adjustments, but not much. OK. And then this is the final coordinate. This is optimized, and we want to calculate, measure the angle. So this is the angle, and uh, 105, 105.975 degrees. So sorry, the unit here is wrong. Um, yeah, and then we want to calculate the distance between the atoms. So one point zero one six two, one point zero one six two. That's wrong. So you see that is quite accurate. The error is within one percent. Yeah. So the structure is uh, successfully calculated. And then we want to go to the next step. So for the next step, this is the um, uh, input file for the NEB.x. That is the nonjet elastic band calculation to calculate the energy barrier. And um, it is mostly similar, but there are there are still one thing that is new here. This specifies the path um, of the of the energy barrier calculation. 
and from scratch, so it doesn't take the previous calculations, and the method is uh, NEB, that's uh, as default, and uh, this is the maximum uh, maximum steps that you take, and this is the step length, and this is the um, optimization algorithm. Usually, usually you should use this one. This is quite good, and um, the number of images is twelve. So this is important. Basically, it means that the the image here means one point, one point here in this graph. So this is the first image, this is the last image, and then twelve images in be in, in between means that uh, you have uh, like the first one, the last one, and then you have another ten images uh, in between, so that you can sample this um, this energy curve, and and hopefully you can get the um, energy barrier. So the more you have here the slower your code would be, but um, the more precise it will get. But usually, I guess, uh, for this small molecule, 12 is um, enough. And this is the climbing image. Usually, um, at first try, you you should keep it as, n as no climbing image, so without this method. But, in, but if you want to refine your calculation, you can turn this on. You know? And this is the path threshold, so basically, um, if the um, let's say if the change of the path is uh, smaller than the threshold, the NEB calculation will stop. So the lower this uh, this number is, the more precise your uh, output would be. Okay, and then this is the path, begin path and end path, and this is the this structure here, and then this part is. Uh, is basically the uh, very similar to the input file of the pw.x. You have the prefix, output directory, and sort of potential directory. And you have the system card. There is a symbol cubic, uh, and um, yeah, everything is the same. Yeah, keep everything the same until until here. Uh, the uh, atomic species, and then you write the positions of the first. Of the starting point and the position of the end point. So the position of the starting point, we should take it from the uh, from the output of the relaxation file. That is here. That is the relaxed uh, structure here. Just copy and oh sorry, copy and paste it here. So this is the starting point, and then the the end point is the inversion. Of this uh, of this molecule, and in this ca case, it is quite uh, easy. We just have uh, have to add a minus sign here uh, because because the nitrogen is on the z axis and the hydrogens are all, all of the hydrogen atoms are on the z equals uh, zero plane. So that's why I added those uh, restrictions in the in the relaxation calculation at the first step. So, so this is the original uh, molecule. This is the inverted molecule, and then we need to specify the k points. And this is also a gamma point calculation, and then we are done. Yeah, and uh, now we want to first clear the screen. We want to calculate. So, uh, in this case, MPI run is more or less this, uh, very similar to the pw.x. Uh, minus mp2, use two cores, and uh, oh, what is this? This is the quantum espresso QE3 um, bin. And this time we don't use uh, uh, pw.x, but we use neb.x. Yeah. And then minus imp, and uh, this is nh3.2. An output and h three dot two. Okay. So there is an error, and uh, let's find out. Could not find name name list and um, electrons on the discrash and electrons. 
Okay, so let's see. Okay, so the problem is that I've I deleted this by accident, this uh, slash here, and um, so that the name card is not uh, finished. No? And then we correct this one, and uh, we do the calculation again. Okay, so this time it works. It will take some time, and um, as usual, we can use tail NSF to two. Maybe dot out, and then you see it, this is the second iteration, and for each image, it will calculate the uh, calculate the single point calculation again. So this is actually quite uh, time time consuming. Yeah, you see that this is a very small uh, molecule, so that I can show you here. But actually, the energy calculate uh, energy barrier calculation of a large crystal or some uh, atom on on a on a crystal or some diffusion of atoms is usually very uh, time consuming. Yeah, so this is done quite quick. And um, and now let's go inside this uh, output file. So you see that um, this calculation actually outputs a lot of output file. And the most important two are one is here, that NB dot out, another is the AXSF, uh, and this and for this you can you can open it using the X crystal that I will show later. And uh, this is the NB dot out, and you will get a number here activation energy. This is the energy barrier that we can copy from here. You here, yeah. And um, actually, this is this is a very good uh, result because um, it only differ uh, it deviates from the reference around ten percent, uh, below ten percent. So th this is a quite a good quite a good result for the energy calculation. Um, and then I want to show you the X Kristen. To open the AXC, uh, XSF uh, file. So, in this time, you don't uh, open PWSCF, but open structure and open AS, uh, AXSF, and basically this file. And you see that there are 12 points, there are 12 steps. So, basically, it is the same uh, amount of um, images. You know? So this, this this records the path between the two images, between the molecule and and it's I inverted, and this is the uh, most energy efficient way to switch from these two molecules. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so. In today's video, I have shown you how to calculate the inversion barrier, and I also. I showed you how to uh, do a simple relaxation calculation and also the um, NEB.x uh, energy barrier calculation. If you learn something from my video, you can show your support by uh, pressing like or subscribe to my channel. So thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you next time.